Hi everyone, not always you need AI. Quite often I hear companies asking me if we can do this or that with AI, but when we dig deeper, it turns out they do not need AI at all. It is important to remember that AI is not a magic pill, especially when it comes to process automation or optimization. You need to figure out how to connect your AI to internal documents or processes, and most often this is the biggest challenge. Finally, when you figure out the data flow and exchange between apps, you think about deploying AI at a certain stage. In fact, in many cases, you do not even need to use AI. In my recent project, I show how a client wanted to optimize email automation workflow with AI, but it turned out to a custom email notification system that doesn't use AI at all. And recently, I had a few projects like this. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the creation of a custom email automation system that I built for one of my clients. Stick around because this automation took me a few days to build and I will show you some golden insights on automation with Microsoft Excel and Make.com. Let's dive in. So I had a client who works in the financial sector and in order for them to do their work, they need to request a lot of information. So essentially, they are sending information requests that is made in the Excel sheets to track whichever documents a client needs to submit. When the client have submitted documents, there will be a specific column to select yes or no, whether the document is submitted or not. This document is shared through SharePoint with clients so that everybody can access the file at any time, the client and their clients as well. And any changes that are implemented, they are, uh, they are immediately visible for both sides. So in order to see how that works, let's actually take a look how the information request file is actually looking. So here we can see how the information request file looks and we can find the company name, the contact person, the email, and they request a lot of different documents. So if you take a look here, they ask for general questions, they ask for legal issues, IT questions, tangible assets, trade payable stocks, and many, many more other things. And if we go to the bottom, there are like 147 rows of different documents they're asking. If we were to count those, it was about like oh, over 100 documents that they need to submit. And here we have the column L where a customer needs to submit whether the document is submitted or not. Also in this column C, we can see the deadline. And if we are past the deadline, basically we need to go and send those clients a reminder so that they can submit the documents. Otherwise, we, we as a client, right, as my client, they can't make their own job if they don't have the document submitted. That's why there was a specific person actually doing that and going into each file and checking whether there is a deadline or no. And if there is like a date which is past the deadline, they need to send a reminder that, hey, you need to submit this and that doc. And this is fine to doing for a few clients. And in our case, we'll be looking at five clients and this will be OK. But this financial firm, they have hundreds of clients. And when it comes to check that for 100 clients, this is, becomes a little bit different. And that's why we have built an email automation system that will do that automatically for that. Let's actually take a look how that works. So in order to do that automatically, as we can see here, we have five different clients, basically the same structure of the information request for each and every client. And we have another file that's going to aggregate all the information from all the five files into one. So we do this using Power Query. We press refresh and we should get all the information into one file. And if we look here, we've got the company name Flowbyte and we have all the information that is needed for Flowbyte. Then we get another company called My Mass Advisor, which is my company. Then another sample XXX LLC. Then we got AAA LLC and, MM, uh, and BBB LLC. OK, so we've got five companies in total in all the the whole information request is there. By the way, refreshing the query um, is not manual. It's going to happen in a certain period. So that's what that will be offline. They don't need to open the file to do refresh. And here we need to give a couple minutes for the documents to update here. And basically the query will run at something like 8 a.m. in the morning and the scenario will, will run at something like 8.15 in the morning. We'll give it a few minutes for the, all the data to update on all instances, because in OneDrive, if you would run it instantly, you may end up in the case that some of the data is not updated. So let's give it a few minutes and let's actually run to see if we get any data and if we get the emails. So in our case, it seems that it's running and we should receive three emails in total. And let's actually see what are those emails. And I have a separate sheet with the tables. I will explain that a little bit later. But here we can see that we have three clients, Flowbyte, MS Advisory and XXX LLC. And Flowbyte and missing 38 documents, L, uh, MS Advisory, four documents and XXX LLC, four documents. So we should receive uh, three mail emails in, in total for each specific company. And in case we receive more than five documents so that it's not a spammy document, uh, instead of sending e name of each specific document that is missing, we will be sending by group. So basically saying 
15 documents missing in general questions, five documents and legal issues, nine documents and stocks, etc. So let's actually see how that works. So we should have received three emails if we go there. So, hey, Max Stitch, we would like to remind you that yesterday was the final day for document submission for this company. Here are five documents that are missing for. Okay, perfect. This is for the company XXX LLC. Let's go to another email address and see if we received any emails here. Say, hey, MS Advisory. So another client, MS Advisory, you have five documents to be submitted. So we received that email as well. And the third one was for the company that was missing 38 documents. So if we go there, we can actually see. Let me zoom in. Um, hello, Maxim's Flowbyte. Yesterday was the final day for document submission for Flowbyte.ai. Please ensure that all the necessary documents are prepared and submitted on time. So 15 documents in general questions, five legal, nine in stocks, three loans, etc. etc. So we got it exactly the way we want it. And let me actually quickly explain how that works. So essentially, the first module that I have in make.com is and for those who are not planning to build this automation for yourself, so you can skip that part to the ending of the video, just where I summarize things. But uh, for those who want to see how that technically works, because there are some tricks I do in Excel, I'll explain them right now. So first of all, here, you need to show the path where the file is located and you need to select a specific name. By the way, a quick important thing, if you're using the name equal operator, you have to say set the full name, including the format of the files. So .xls6. If you, if you would set it like this, it would not work. If we run this module once, then it will give you an empty array. Otherwise, you can go with, hey, let's do start Swiss because that will be the beginning of the full file name and then we get the file. So that works fine. Then what happens next is um, there is a access small Excel trick. So before I get there, let me explain what kind of tables I, hit, I have. So here in this um, file, I have a big, big document with many, many rows. So those are aggregated file with all the aggregated client requests, information requests. And if we go um, go to the very bottom of this document to see how many documents are there in total, we can actually see that there are, see, there are almost like 757 different document requests. So in total, this is about like 615 documents that we are missing. The problem is whenever I ask main.com to access that particular folder, uh, sorry, uh, that particular file and this table, it will output each row as a separate bundle. And imagine you will be dealing with like hundreds of different bundles. And this is just for five clients. My client had over like 100 clients. And that will be like thousands of rows and thousands of bundles in make.com. This is not something you definitely want to deal with in make.com. So in order to avoid this, I have created specific tables that will have only the information I need. And I have pre-created them in Excel. So let's actually take a look. So here, I have a table that will, it's a filter function that will filter for me the days that are past the deadline. So either it's like the day of the deadline or past the deadline so that I don't need any other data. Also, sometimes we have an empty array, so we don't want to account for that. And of course, we want the status if it's not submitted or empty. If not submitted or empty, it means the client haven't done anything there and we need to send a reminder. If the client has uh, ticked the status to be yes, it means he submitted the document, so we don't want to see there. So here I get the table with all the different documents that are missing. So the next table would actually tell me what type of documents are missing. So 15 documents in general questions, five documents in legal issues. So that's why I need the second table. In the third table, will just a pure total. It will tell me that this company is missing that many documents, this company, that many documents, and this company, that many documents. So all the formulas here are dynamic, and it's basically using dynamic arrays for everything. And the problem within Make, to actually access those tables, what range should I refer to? Because Make is always asking you, when you want to retrieve some, some more data, you will have to specify a range. And I know that my table, it will always start from the second row because the first row will be the headline and here so a2 essentially will always be the beginning and the size of the table will also be the same like in terms of like columns so k will always be the last column the only thing i don't know how many rows we will have because now we have this thing for five clients what if we have 100 clients and every day will be, there will be different number of rows and again if we set a range to like thousand rows or ten thousand of rows you will get ten thousand of bundles and this is not what you want to deal with with uh, within make.com so that's why instead i have a little trick here we'll be extracting that information from each table this is this information comes from this table uh this table will be right here and this table will be that last third table in my excel file so in order for me not to specify huge ranges and getting a lot of data that I don't need, I have a little trick here. So I have pre-created a small table in the technical page that basically tells me 
how many rows are in each table. So in this case, for example, I'm saying that in rows one table, so in the very first table that we have here, there are total 47 rows. And if we go just to the very bottom, we actually see that the last row is row 47. I have to clarify, those are not the rows of the table. This is basically the last row in Excel for my table, because in total there will be like 46 rows because the first row will be the headline. So um, that's for the first table. And then we go for the second table. For example, the last row will be the row number nine. And for the third table, the last row will be the row number four. And if we go there, we can actually see that for the last table it was four and for the second table was nine. So this is what we do here. We actually access a specific table. This was formatted as a specific table to get those values. Let's actually see how that works. So here, when I output those things, so if we look at the row, we can see there are actually three rows, uh, but I have simplified the version that I had from my client. So instead of like notification, sending notification three days before and three days after, we have just notification for the deadline date. So this number would give me exactly the number of rows I have in my first table. This number will give me exactly the rows I have in my third table. And again, the this would be the number exactly I need in my second table. And then whenever uh, whenever I reference these things, I can specify the number of rows in my range that I need to use. And that this is the way to dynamically kind of adjust. If you look there, the we pass the range from A2 to K47. This is exactly the range we need to have for our first table from A2 to K47. Okay, so that's why we have the whole table within here. What happens next? I retrieve another data from the third table to actually see whether we have more than five documents or less than five documents. So we have more than five documents. We're going to go this route and we're going to say how many documents are missing in each group of documents. If we have less than five documents, we will send the email to each and every client specifying exactly the names of the documents that are missing. And the reason I do this because I don't want to make the emails too spammy. Imagine like 38 documents missing. So there will be a lot of information that client's probably not going to read. He's just going to go to the file and read that. But if it's like four or five or three, it's okay to actually say, oh, okay, I just forgot this one thing. Let me just send it quick. Okay. So, and this is what happens here. The only thing I should mention here, we've got a router. And the reason I left router here, because we have just one road here, because in my client case, I actually had three routes. So we did a notification system to a client three days before the deadline, during the deadline, and three days past the deadline. That way, kind of the client will receive at least three emails when it's getting closer to the deadline. So, and, and the router here will basically need, will be needed to split those three rows. Uh, as three different row nodes. So yeah, um, another thing. So here I retrieve the data from my second table, basically. And here I aggregate the whole thing by a client. And the reason I do this by a client, because I want to send an email to each. So here's the important thing that here, two clients from like uh, MS Advisory and XX LLC, they have already received email because they had less than five emails. So that's why here I have to do a little trick. I do the iterator, then I aggregate the whole thing. And this actually thing took me a lot of time to figure out how to work with that because I have three clients there and kind of three operations coming, but I need to send just one email. So in order to access the data from here, I would actually use the text aggregator to aggregate all the files that are missing by number and type of file. But here I will sort them or not sort, actually aggregate them by a certain key and key will consist of different files. So those different files include the client name. Uh, so if we go there and if we check, so that will be like the name of the company, the name of the contact person and the email of that person so that I can access that data later on here. And here you can actually see I get the name of my company. I get the name of the contact person, contact email and number of total number of documents that are missing. Okay, actually, the only thing here, uh, which is quite weird, we've got another filter and this filter actually was saying that if the number of documents is more than five, then just don't pass it through. And we can see that it actually filter worked because um, for two operations, it actually stopped. But it had three operations here, which is which is weird, which shouldn't be the case, because here we see the first got six bundles and the second and third are totally empty. So here I said another filter that would say if key exists and if it does, then it creates the specific variable uh, for the client. And basically that's what we have here. And it's just one because two clients already have received their emails. And this is this is important. So we don't get to spam them quite a lot. So in the last uh, last uh, basically uh, module is an email where I said the again, all the data is dynamic. I said the email of the client from this module. I say what are the documents missing for what company. And we've got the email in HTML format formatted so that I can 
actually say what are the documents missing, a uh, mentioning client's name in the opening part, and um, etc. So that's how we get like kind of custom email here. Hey, we would like to remind you that yesterday was the final day. Hey, Maxims, and we name all the documents here. So yeah, this is how it looks. Uh, in practice, it looked a, li a little bit uh, more difficult, but I think uh, you can pretty much get the idea. So to recap, with the new email automation system, you're set to streamline your follow-ups. Do not waste time on doing manual work that can be automated and make sure all clients submit their documents on time. If you found this video helpful and want more productivity hacks like this, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. I post new videos every week all about making tech work for you. And hey, if you're interested in one of the automations for your business but not sure how to build one, reach out to me and my company, flowbyte.ai, link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.